All right, so this is absolutely not a drill. Uh, my favorite colonizers, the Targaryens, are back, and there's absolutely, unless you got a couple dragons, there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. <laughs> no, you a liar. Speech, go to patreon.com slash Adrian Expression and check everything out. The podcast episode I just put up yesterday was lit. So just getting to it. And speaking of getting into things, we're going to get into this damn House of the Dragons. I, oh my gosh, yesterday I think it was, HBO decided to literally knock our wigs off. And you know, before we even go any further, since I just brought up wigs, House Valerian looks cute here. They do look cute here. I'm not gonna lie about that shit. Uh, but we gotta get Lenor's wig together. We gotta get we gotta get his wig together. I don't know what y'all got to do, HBO. Like the other, the others look I, right, they look I, right, but and I just this is the thing, I'd be nervous, especially with the fan base of Game of Thrones and with the show where it's just like, oh my gosh, do y'all know how to write for black people? Is it gonna be this weirdo ass shit? Like that's the only thing that's making me nervous, but you know, the hair looks like I you got to get Lenor's wig together. Lena looks sickening on the other side. Yeah, she looks iconic on the other side. But uh they look like royalty. Oh my god, I'm getting my life. I think the only scene of a dragon we kind of saw, we just we barely, so I don't know who the fuck this is. It's giving me life cheat. I don't know if they're acting like it's Valerion. That's the only dragon we saw. And I am just like, literally, like I said on Twitter, I'm foaming at the mouth. I'm just like, okay, I, I need to see these other dragons. I know that they're gonna be all up in the other trailers. Uh, that's gonna come out. The girl says it's coming in 2022. I don't know exactly when. I like, I'm just like, stop it! I mean, they showing off the hand of the king. And follow Great Area on YouTube. She be knowing everything. She's like a real reader of the books. And I'm not like that. But I, so the information I be getting is from watching YouTubers. Like, she's iconic. Talking Thrones, all the girls. Damon and Rhaenyra. Damon fighting somebody over here, bitch. Corliss Valerian and his family, bitch. We got uh, Allison coming in here with this dagger, bitch. Like, what the hell? Coming in the council meeting with the fucking dagger, bitch. We got a revamp, I guess, of the Iron Throne. And it's kind of looking a little bit more similar to... Uh, how the throne looks in the books, even though the throne is like in the books is like really high and but you know they, they added a little bit more oomph, some some melted fucking swords to this shit. Renera's looking at the throne over here like bitch. I am and then we had this like little finger or various kind of character. She's apparently like a witch. Her name is Masaria. Like I am going to get my I'm gonna get my life. I'm gonna get my <laughs> I'm gonna get my life. Like I said, when these dragons are fighting in midair, I don't want a replay of season A. And the scenery was beautiful, the shots were beautiful. Um, the last season of the Game of Thrones, when they were just, you know, John and Daenerys and um, the Night King were all on dragons. I was like, okay, it's cute, but y'all have these dragons like, you know, biting each other and scratching each other and shit. Dragons have fire, bitch. They need to be breathing that shit. They need to be breathing that shit. They need to be breathing it. Don't play with me. Do not play with me. One of the other reasons I'm excited for House of the Dragon is because apparently George R. R. Martin, the author of the books, he helped to write the first episode. I think he also helped to write the pilot episode. He's a co-creator on the show. And the other main co-creator, his name is Ryan Kondo, and he is like a super, super fan of the books. And it's interesting because before HBO chose Ryan Kondo to do this, you know, with George R. R. Martin and the rest of it, I think Miguel Spachnik, like the rest of these showrunners, um, George R. R. Martin was saying that HBO was trying to get somebody who didn't even read his books to help write the show. And he was like, I do not want a repeat of that shit. Like, <laughs> essentially, he didn't say a repeat, but he's like, I don't want that. I don't want that. So that's the main thing that's keeping me excited. Make sure y'all get these wigs together. Please make sure you get these wigs together. I do not want to see no stiff straw broom man. Straw broom built ass wigs, bitch. You got me fucked up. You got me fucked up. I guess a lot of today's video is gonna focus on TV and movies because <laughs> there was this, let me read this shit. So Letitia Wright, you know that she's playing Shuri. Uh, she played Shuri, she's playing Shuri in the upcoming Black Panther movie. Uh, the Hollywood Reporter has shared a new report regarding a number of actors who continue to defend their anti-vaccination beliefs on social media and on sets, including Letitia Wright, 
on the set of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. The report also reveals that Wright and her US team of representatives parted ways following her posting of a controversial anti-vaccine video on social media in December. I just thought this was very ironic, considering that Shuri, the character, would, a genius, would look at Letitia like, girl, are you? <laughs> Oh my gosh, um, what else is going on in the world? Uh, I have not watched the latest episode of What If yet. I'm going to. I'm going to as soon as I'm done with this show, I'm going to. But anyway, speaking of What If, some execs at Marvel, Disney, whatever, were saying that they were planning to have a Star-Lord T'Challa spin off into his very own show. And with the combination of that news, it's like, I cannot help but feel like, damn, Chadwick, like, damn. You know, like, on top of um, it already being sad that he just it was, to me, gone too soon um, on, like, the content that we would have gotten. But, you know, he left a lasting legacy and he was diligent and um, selfless, I feel like, until the end. So, you know, all our time is limited on this spinning rock on this tired ass. Oh my God, I'm so tired of it. <laughs> on this spinning rock, on this on this pebble, uh, in the vastness of space, our time is limited. We just gotta make the best of it. We just have to make the best of the uh, hours and days and years that we have, you know? Uh, speaking of Marvel, also, I saw this picture. I think Marvel Perfect Shots on Twitter tweeted this out, and I could not help but notice how sick Mindy's outfits are. I'm not gonna stop talking. I'm not gonna stop talking about Eternals until the shit comes out. I'm gonna continue to talk about that shit after. It looks like it's gonna be so fucking amazing. I, and, and Richard fucking Rob Stark, Richard Madden, uh, he, I mean, everybody look good. Richard Madden, hey! Hey, your ass look good, bitch. Where's Jon Snow? Where's Kit Harrington too, bitch? I need to see him and his motherfucking outfit too, bitch. Hey, what's up? What's up? So I'm sure by now Dave Chappelle being corny is not news to any of you all. Uh, but he recently, it's so hilarious to watch uh, all these people talk about cancel culture from like Netflix specials. <laughs> or like going on national, you know, news networks and some shit, talking about cancel culture. Oh, my voice has been silenced. My, my career has been canceled. And like people like him, and I guess this is the Las Vegas residency of, of comics, I guess. Like when your career is just nearing the end or when you ain't got shit else to do, do you do all comics kind of veer to when they can't keep up with social thought? like? or when their their jokes just are only funny in the years uh, 1999 to 2006 maybe. Or is that the rite of passage is for all comics, for all comedians to be like, well, my jokes just ain't funny no more. You can't say the shit that you wanna say anymore. Like, okay, step your pussy up, nigga. And what's hilarious to me is that they'll say the things that they say that they're not allowed to say on national platforms, but you're saying this shit. How are you not allowed to say this shit, but you're up there saying that shit? What the fuck is wrong? Like, you niggas are so whack and corny. And I wanna make sure I remind you of that shit every fucking day, you corny as fuck. And y'all are millionaires making so much coin off of saying the shit that you claim that you can't say no more. Bitch, you're saying it. And you got fans who are on your dick 24 seven, hanging off of every word that you say it that you say that you can't say. Shut the fuck up. Dave Chappelle, of course, in snippets of his special, cause I did not watch that shit, and you know the random fucking Dave Chappelle stands gonna come in the comments, Duncan, you didn't watch that shit, you didn't watch, I didn't, bitch. I saw the clips of the dumb shit that he said that was made viral on social media. That's exactly what the fuck I saw, and that's what I'm not clicking on his shit, period. The fuck are you talking about? Of course, he brought up the baby, and you know, he, ca he categorized the baby's homophobia as a very egregious mistake, and I will never stop saying that it's so hilarious to watch people categorize homophobia as an as a mistake or you know it not being that serious. And when that when that same rhetoric is used uh, when they talking about people who are being racist, oh it's just a mistake. Can't you just be more forgiving? They quick to get mad. So it's like another case of you missing the point on purpose. But Dave Chappelle said he made the baby made a very egregious mistake. 
uh, before going into how DeBaker received more backlash for his offensive comments than fatally shooting someone. So he was comparing, because there was this whole thing, apparently the baby shot somebody in Walmart, killed his ass, the baby said it was out of self-defense, and um, Dave Chappelle said nothing bad happened to his career. Do you see where I'm going with this? Uh, he said, in our country, you can shoot and kill a nigga, but you better not hurt a gay person's feelings. And I think it's, <laughs> y'all are so pathetic. Like, I want you to think about this for a second. Which rapper's career was derailed by murder? Like, if, if a rapper came out and said, hey, I punched some nigga up, I beat this nigga ass until he died, I shot that nigga up. If a straight rapper came out and said, hey, yeah, bitch, I shot, I, I be killing niggas. You know, we're discarding whether it was, you know, self-defense or not. Let's just go along with this argument. If a, if a straight rap nigga came out here and said, I shot that nigga, I be shooting niggas up, I be, did they be bragging, they be putting that shit in their songs. Would the, why, why do you think that that would derail his career? It's like, that speaks to y'all straighty standards. It don't speak to, that's, that speaks to y'all standards. The fact that a nigga could really come out here and say that shit and be okay, but if he said that his ass was bisexual, or if he said he was gay or some shit, that's when we would see the real visceral reactions from you bitches. So it's like, oh, well, he can get away with murder, but he can't he can't talk shit about gay people? Yeah, because that shit is allowed in your communities. That violence, that fucked up shit is allowed. It's, it's actually encouraged in your communities. It's almost like he ain't got no credit if he ain't did no shit like that. So what, are you what point are you trying to make? Yeah, bitch, we leave that straight weird shit to y'all, but when you start talking about gay people, People, bitch, you gonna hear us fucking talk. The fuck are you talking about, nigga? Fuck are you talking about? And then he made another dumbass statement. I mean, he was like, it was all types of transphobia in that shit. He made another dumbass statement talking about the LGBT community. Basically, please stop punching down on my community. And it's like, you have to be so stupid. You have to have, like, the brain matter has to be leaking out of your fucking ears for you to literally ignore the entire black community that is also LGBT. You sound stupid as hell. And like I said, it's so funny to see these people, to see him use this argument like, oh, well, that, you know, he could kill somebody and nobody said anything, but all of a sudden now when, when we talk about gays, oh my gosh, we can't, do you say some shit? That's when his career is, is threatened. Like y'all don't make fucked up violence a norm in hip hop culture a lot of times, especially in like straight communities. Like what are you talking about? Of course, why are you surprised that a fucking rap nigga, you know, did not have his career fucked up by murder? Like, are you, is this your first year on planet earth, nigga? Get the fuck out of here. I've always said that a lot of the cis, straight, you know, black community, they would rather see niggas beat each other's ass, kill each other up, shoot each other up, you know what I mean? They would rather see that than see niggas holding hands. So why are you acting surprised and shocked that violence or murder did not affect his career? Like I said, self-defense off the table or whatever, because he put it off the table, Dave Chappelle moved that shit out the way when he was trying to make this fucked up ass, um, uh, argument. It's like y'all take pride in having a brain that only functions at 1%. Like, do you do any deeper thinking? Half these companies and shit that canceled the baby or canceled these goddamn performances of the baby had more homophobes on stage. They just didn't say shit recently. Half these companies that did that shit, do LGBT people feel safe at they fucking, <laughs> and they companies? And they, like y'all don't, y'all just look at shit at face value and just act like clowns. Drenched in homophobia, acting just like how um, white racist act of black people as a whole, except y'all ain't got an ink, y'all ain't got a measure of the white people power. So it's like you trying to be massa without the whip. Sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. Anyway, speaking of sitting your ass down, uh, a lot of artists are going to want to sit their asses down because, like I've been saying all week, Adele is coming. Like she's coming October 15th with. Her new song, Easy On Me, she released a video snippet. It's just giving seasonal depression. She came right on time. It's getting cold, the leaves is falling off the trees and all that shit, like bitch. She knew exactly which time to come. Especially if you like me, you're gonna be alone. You don't really cuddle with these niggas like that. You just get them out your motherfucking house when you're done. What else? I was gonna talk about some other stuff, but you know, I don't want it to be too depressing because we need some fun in our lives. Uh, anyway, we can end this video on, look at this shit from a Louis Vuitton fashion show. I'm just like, okay, like, first of all, this music. <laughs> Like, <laughs> her walk is eating them girls up. Now, I want to know how she, first of all, how she got on the motherfucking, like, 
How's she going in the wrong place? And then how it took so long for y'all security to, to get her ass out of there? <laughs> she said overconsumption equals extinction. She's not wrong. She's not wrong. I just thought it was so, it was so funny for her, like, her model walk to be chewing them girls up. She was, she was chewing you girls up in many ways, in more ways than one. They picked her ass up there and took her out, but it was very effective because I can't tell you, it's not like I would be able to go buy the shit, but I can't tell you one car ran on that goddamn runway, but bitch, I can tell you exactly what that's I say. <laughs> anyway, thank y'all so much for watching. I love you so much. I gotta go. I'm done talking. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and make sure that you have a good goddamn evening. But they couldn't scare me. Open up your mouth and give me two pairs, please. Baby, don't you want to come excite me? Stick your teeth into it, don't tread lightly. I'm dripping wet, you know it's all inside me.